I'm Nigel McMillan. I'm a cancer biologist who works on precision medicine to cure infectious causes of cancer. One third of cancers are caused by infectious organisms. So we're born with a set of genes, but we don't need to be cursed or blessed by them. We thought these determined everything from eye colour to hair and disease outcomes, but that doesn't need to be the case now. On many diseases we have, it's actually our genes that are at the heart of the cause of these things, things like cancer, ageing and the like. We can edit these to change these outcomes. We treat patients right now in what is best for a big group, but we're moving towards precision medicine and that is a treatment that works just for you as a patient and that treatment may not work for the next person in line with the same disease. So in the future, we're going to develop precision medicines that are just for an individual's particular disease based on their genetic makeup. We're gonna develop antibodies that only fight your disease. We're gonna alter genes that um, will cure you. We work to cure cancers that are caused by infectious organisms. We can go in and delete out the virus genes that result in this cancer, and we can cure this disease in our preclinical models. The next step is to get it into the clinic. I'm an infection control professional. I work with the World Health Organization as part of the Global Outbreak Alert and Response Network. So with the modern pandemic, you know, these days we, we're really concerned about how fast infectious disease can travel. Humans are, are flying faster. We're getting from point A to point B so much quicker. Of course, we have refugee problems. We've got movement of people constantly. Low middle income countries, there are different priorities, so competing priorities. The competing priorities is the main issue, but um, you know, sanitation, hygiene, um, education, around the equator particularly, and that's also where we see a lot of zoonotic diseases as well, so diseases which are actually originate in animals, but then are transmitted to humans. In Australia, we're very lucky. We have a wonderful vaccine schedule, for example, polio um, in Australia. We've, it's under control. Everyone thinks that polio is gone, so a lot of people will travel and not actually get themselves immunised for polio. When you're looking at prevention with infection control, it is common sense. It is actually simple things like hand hygiene, distancing yourself if you're unwell. Because common sense is not as common as we'd like to think. I'm a biomechanical engineer and I lead a team of biomedical engineers, designers and scientists who develop personalised biomedical devices um, for injury and ageing. Personalised medicine has a huge role to play in ageing because at the moment people are just treated as an average um, as they age. The problem is, is that we're not an average, we are personalised. We're developing technologies that prevents the break of musculoskeletal tissues or neurological or cardiovascular tissues. We're interested in training tissues so they get to optimum strength so they won't break. But if they do break and they do need repairing, how do you do a personalised implant to match what's broken? So it's using a mix of regenerative therapies, um, 3D printing of implants, and also intelligent rehabilitation. To we work a lot with digital twins. If you're going to 3D print an implant, for example, then you need a digital model of that implant and of the person that it's going to go into. That's a digital twin. What we're doing with uh, Dinesh Palapana is doing neurorehabilitation with the, a personalised digital twin. We're using the digital twin to interpret his intent, when he thinks, to generate the movement. He's relearning to ride the bike again with the assistance of the digital twin to make, to replace what's been broken. <laughs>